get ready with me as I tell you guys how I met my fiance. Disclaimer, if you're against selling that cat and putting a price on your kitty, I suggest you exit because over here, we got a prize baby okay i am just doing the final touches on my makeup because honestly i filmed this video and then i was like oh let me film it again people come on my comments all the time and they're like be honest you were out selling that cat and that's how you met him and i was because i have no shame in having a price on my kitty cat ma'am you should and that's the problem right there. But you know what? I'm not even going to be mad at her. If she don't got no shame in selling the cat, at least she's being honest about it. Now, the fact that she got a fiance out the deal, <laughs> that's on that man who chose to wife up a whore. Rule number one is that the whores are for everybody. Rule number two is you do not wife the whores. Very simple rules that if as a man you're going to sit there and actually play that game, you must abide by at all times. Because in the end, you will regret it may not regret it today. You may not regret it tomorrow, but one day you will wake up regretting it. So I met my now fiance at one of my favorite hotel bars that I used to go to in Boston. It's actually waiting for my friend because she and I were gonna go a little bar hopping. So as soon as I walked in and sat down, I think I was sitting down for probably like two minutes. He walks in with his guy friend. Immediately they walk up to me. First thing he said was, can I buy you a drink? Take notes, ladies. That is how a gentleman approaches a woman sitting at the bar. He asked me my name. He didn't ask me what I did for a living. He didn't ask any of those things. He just asked me what I wanted to drink. And the bartender was making our drinks. I excused myself to the ladies room and I wanted him to see my legs because my legs were out and I was looking good, okay? And when I came back, the sitting arrangements had changed because originally his friend was sitting next to me and he was sitting on the other side to his friend. And when I came back from the bathroom, him and his friend had exchanged seats. So I obviously caught game because I'm like, okay, so obviously he really likes me, which is fine because he was the one that was swiping the car. <laughs> Then at this point, my friend walks in, he offers to buy my friend a drink and you know, we're hanging out, we're getting to know each other. And at the end of the night, he asks me if I wanna come back to his place. And obviously I told him, it was gonna cost him because I'm sorry, you just met me. So if you're gonna assume I'm a, I'm going to be a hoe. Now ma'am, now you're being a hypocrite. Now she's trying to make the story sound like he assumed that she was a whore, therefore that's why she put a price on it. Yet in the very beginning of this story she told, she made it very clear that's what she does and she doesn't have any shame about doing it. And now she's trying to make it seem like because he wanted to take her home the first night, that's why she told him it was going to cost him $1,000. I mean, now let's be honest about what we got going on right here now. She made a choice to go to a hotel bar to meet up with a friend. She already made it very clear that she does put a price on herself for men who want to get access to her. Then when said man wanted to get access to her that same night, she let him know it was going to cost thousand dollars in order to do so you are doing nothing but a tiktok tutorial on how to be a high price escort that gets paid i'm not a free house and he told me that you know that wasn't something that he does and he doesn't carry you know that amount of cash on him <laughs> but he then proceeds to tell me that he would still like to get to know me and take me out to dinner one day most men are threatened by women that have a price on their kitty. So I was actually surprised to hear him say he would still like to take me out to dinner, <laughs> even though I turned him down or told him that it was gonna cost him some coins if I was to go home with him. But when I gave him my number, I did not really think that he was going to like actually reach out. A week later, he reached out and he asked me out. Oh man. 
out to dinner on our first date. Do mind, he met me during my birthday month. We met like three weeks before my actual birthday and for my actual birthday, I was going to Morocco. We went on our first date and then we went on our second date a week before I was supposed to leave for Morocco. So he already, you know, asked me out for our third date, but because it was my birthday month, I told him that I wasn't gonna go on a third date with him unless he was gonna have a gift for me because it's my birthday month. You are courting me, you want to take me out, you want to spend time with me. What do I look like spending time on my birthday month with a man who's not gonna buy me a gift? <laughs> and once again, he wasn't offended by that and he said, of course he could do that on our third date. So we went out to eat and then he was like, would you like to go back to my place? On this day, I said, of course. Um, also, my gift was at his house. I wanted to see what the gift was. So we go to his house. He got me this cute Louis Vuitton purse with this Chanel perfume. Also a basket filled with like mask, chocolate, little things that girls like. Like he literally put a lot of thought into it. And I was like, that is so sweet. And then he wanted to kiss me. And I was like, mm -mm, baby, relax. <laughs> Hold on, we need to talk about it. I was like, what are we doing? Yeah, because she don't kiss clients. <laughs> the more she tells this story, you know exactly what this is. We, what are we doing? And so he then proceeded to ask me to be his girlfriend. But like I said, I was thotting and bopping. So I had a Rasta, a Rasta of men that were taking care of me, paying my bills, buying me nice things, taking me on vacation. So I told him that there was no way I could give him exclusiveness unless he was willing to take care of everything that these other guys were taking care of, which was my bills, my you know car, everything. And once again, he wasn't threatened by it and he agreed said of course that's something that he can do i then was like okay i'm going to be your girlfriend and so then i became a stay-at-home girlfriend and i didn't have to go out and thought and bop anymore you know because i had him paying my bills At the time i had my own place he had his own place we did not start really living together until after we got engaged and even after we got engaged i still lived in my own place for a while if you guys like to hear the story about how i got him to propose to me let me know in the comments but yeah that is how i met my now fiance moral of the story is don't let anybody tell you that your past is going to determine your future and a man that really loves you is going to love you regardless of what you did and the mistakes that you made in the past and this is what I say to men all the time. I've said this too numerous times on this channel. You meet a woman and she's not doing what you want her to do or she doesn't have the mentality that you're looking for or she's all about money. Don't try to change her. Don't waste your time chasing her. Walk away because she has no reason to change because there's always going to be a man out there who is willing to do the things that she wants for her in order to get something from her. But let's go ahead and check out some of these comments so we can kind of just take a temperature. See what social media thinks, see what people were saying, comments, were they agreeing with her? Did they think that that was smart for her to do or were they kind of calling her for what it really was? All right, so first comment says, I'm so glad you're selling it. Some of us are giving it for free. You go, girl. Next comment says, I absolutely failed myself in my 20s. This app would have put me on game. <laughs> Another comment says, I'd be ashamed if I didn't get anything in return. I'm a long-term investment, honey. No, you're not. She was willing to let that man hit for $1,000. What long-term investment is that? And if you are listening to her and following her advice, you are not a long-term investment either. A woman who is a long-term investment is willing to do what it takes to work with a man and build with a man. Because even though he may not be where he wants to be in life, he's shown the characteristics, he's shown the drive, he's shown the track record that he will get there. Women who invest their time in men like that, those are women who aren't for long-term investment. Another comment that says, mental illness disguised as some type of woman empowerment or feminism is very prevalent in 2024. Another comment says, he's an older white man for sure. And uh, it was a lot of people in the comment section making that uh, reference that the guy was definitely an older white guy. They said they did their research and they found out that it was definitely an old white guy who she ended up uh, you know, getting to propose to her. So take that for what it's worth. Another comment that says, when y'all were saying you were pushing P, I had no idea. 
The P was for prostitution. <laughs> and the last comment says, ladies, don't take notes. She sold her cooch for $1,000 to a wrinkly white man and left her drink unattended. She has no survival skills. From the beginning of her story, she said she was for the streets. She then tried to backtrack and pretend as if that's not what she was for to try to make herself look better like she wasn't just some common whore. Reality is that's exactly what she is. She's just a high price type that you got to pay a little bit extra for. Anyway, guys, questions, comments, thoughts, and your feedback, drop them down below. I appreciate when you guys chime in. Don't forget, you can support this channel by hitting that like and subscribe button. And as always, until next time.